Good morning, geocachers, treasure hunters and thrill seekers. It is six o'clock on a Saturday morning, early in July, and I'm going out to do a couple of caches that are in high muggle areas. First one I'm going to is about a kilometre and a half away, and prospects aren't good to be honest with you. Loads of DNFs, not holding I hope not holding out high hopes for this one. Then there's another one relatively close by and another one relatively close by to that. So I thought I'll pop out and see if I can uh, hit at least one of these today, at least get a, another find in. It's a lovely morning. The sun is just kind of cresting over the houses and tickling the top of those trees there, look. Yeah, beautiful. And I think I think I'm getting a whiff of chocolate from, uh, from um, what do they call it now? Well, I still call it round trees. The river Foss is starting to weed over. I've paddled on there a couple of times, but it's heading to that time of year where it'd be no good whatsoever because it will be just covered in duckweed and so on. Got to admit, there's a lot of things I prefer doing in winter now, like camping because there's no bugs and midges. And the kayaking can be fun too. And also, when you're geocaching, you don't come across, across quite so much overgrown stuff to wade through. About 200 metres away. This is a busy main road into York and uh, yeah, this is one of the reasons why I've decided to tackle this one early. Right, I'm about a hundred metres away. I'm curious, geocachers, who else, when they start to approach ground zero, starts looking for possible clues and hints as to where it might be and possibilities? Let me know in the comments. Let me know the kind of things you start looking for too. Look at all that rubbish over there. Oddly enough, Ground Zero's over there somewhere, I think. Yeah, that's not pretty, is it? Well, I've searched this area quite thoroughly. This is where the GPS is pointing to, and I'm not having any joy, so I'm gonna call it. I don't like DNFs, not to worry. There's another one about 270 meters away. Let's go and have a look for that. Hopefully, might have a bit more joy there. Kind of going back the way I came for this one. <laughs> Head down here towards York St. John Uni. That building looks quite good, lit up in the morning sun. I think it's just down here somewhere. Found it, found it. Right, I've signed it, logged it and popped it back. The next one I'm going to do is a puzzle one and it's down by the side of the river Foss, called Block and Key I think. Kind of heading back now the way I came. It's about 500 metres away. Let's get looking. So we're back here by the river Foss that we passed earlier and we've got to go through a gate just down there and into the fairy garden. Now the great thing about that fairy garden down there, you can just see through the gates there, through the railings. There you go, there's more of it down there. There's actually my first FTF, my first first to find, is in that very fairy garden. So it holds a nice memory for me coming back through here. Yeah. So yeah, just over there. Yeah. Good times. <laughs> but today we're heading through this way. It is lovely what they've done with this kind of like fairy garden trail. So there's like a little herb garden area here and then all the way along there are these wonderful little houses. I believe there's a, there are some trail notes and so on. They're back where that uh, FTF cache is because that's like a central hub for the fairy garden walk. But yeah, it's great for the kids. Yeah, look like these. Just hidden in the trees, look. <laughs> Great, isn't it? I'll show you a few more as we go along.
Hello. That's a good idea, look. We've even put some poo bags in there for dogs. Great idea. Not far off at all, actually. And this is one of the problems you can see coming now. Muggles, dog owners. Now I know it's in this area somewhere. Well, that one took some doing. It's a puzzle cache. It actually doesn't matter if I show you a little bit of the, uh, the cache itself, because there is a puzzle to it. And um, yeah, it's an easy enough find, but if you can't solve the puzzle, you can't get in and sign the log. It, oh, it took me ages. <laughs> oh, I made it so much more difficult than it needed to be. Anyway, excellent work, cash owner, team Bob and Saf. That one's definitely getting a favorite point from me. All right, I've signed that, logged it, popped it back. As I say, that was a brilliant little puzzle cache. Oh, it was so frustrating because I had it in my hand and I just couldn't get, I could see the log, but I just couldn't solve the puzzle. It just took me ages to solve the little uh, puzzle to actually access the log, but I did it. I've got this immense sense of relief. <laughs> I didn't want to give up. <laughs> anyway, that was quite uh, good. I think that took me up to 155 fines. If you like this little video, you know what to do. Thumbs up, thumbs down, depending on whether you like it or not. And if you love what I'm doing on the channel, hit the bell, smash the subscribe button, all that kind of stuff. And then you don't miss out on the rest of my geocaching journey and any of the other videos that you might like that I'm doing. All right, you take care of yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Cheerio.